What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today we're going to be doing a little uh, different thing. Majority of the time I'm doing driving content now and less building of the car. So today we're going to be doing a slight change to the car that is going to ultimately help me at clutch kickers and ultimately make the car a little bit more of a street car. We have quite a few things to do before clutch kickers in October. First thing we're going to try and do now, here I have it marked as a 4.6 diff swap, but after speaking to a few people, they say that the 4.6 is way too high of a gear ratio. So basically highway speeds are practically almost at red line. So spoke to Dustin Miles, spoke to a couple different people at the track at clutch kickers, it's like a second gear track for this car, but I'm practically on limiter the whole time. So what I was trying to do is try to go to third gear and basically use third gear as a little bit more uh, more usable because before third gear is way too long, or at right now the car in third gear has a 4.08 final drive and whatever gear ratio third gear is in the R154. And it just ends up being really long. I can't really use it at the track comfortably and rely on it without me falling out of drift. So last round I ran second gear and was practically on limiter the whole time. The car drove awesome. The only downfall was I didn't have enough wheel speed to make like, you know, a crazy amount of smoke or just extend the turns out a little bit longer uh, with a little bit more wheel speed. I decided to take the route and stay in second gear with a longer final drive. So we're coming back from a 4.6 idea. We're at 4.08 right now. We are going to go 3.7. Now, I don't know if the math is correct. I don't know if the calculator that I used is whatever, but according to just this change, I will gain about eight to nine miles per hour in second gear. The car will have a little bit more wheel speed and I'll still have the same kind of snappy response. So we've already started the process of swapping everything over. Uh, this differential is out of a Q45, otherwise known as the Y33 is the chassis code. Y33 comes with 3.69 differential. Um, it's a VLSD differential, but that's not what I'm running. I'm running a welded differential. This is the 3.69 ring. This is the 4.08 ring out of the stock 240. So the reason that I have this extra differential here on the floor is because right before I went to Immokalee last year, the day right before the event, I started to do a pull and my differential exploded. There's probably no oil left. Oh my god. <laughs> there was some pinion gear. I don't need that. Spare parts for days. And here's basically what happened. So the pinion just stripped the teeth off and it's fairly ridiculous on how catastrophic it was. The car felt like the subframe just dropped out of the car entirely. So that's how bad it was. So when we go to build this one, I'm going to take my time and try to get the right gear engagement so I have no issues in the future. So with swapping over to this ring, you're supposed to use the pinion out of the differential that you pull as well. So these are all R200 differentials. I guess this would be considered the R200V because it's a VLSD differential and this would be the R200. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not 100% sure. On the disassembly, you're supposed to mark everything because these caps get line bored with uh, with assembly to the casing. So you can see there, it's pretty much just like a, a main cap for an engine. Everything has its location. So I marked everything with right hand upper, left hand upper, all the shims that go to the differential, basically shift the differential left and right within the housing itself, laid them all out and marked them. This is left hand side. This is like a main space that goes on the outside. I took pictures of everything. This is the right side, right spacer. Uh, thrust washer, I guess is what you call this. This goes on top here. The actual uh, or input piece that goes to the differential. And then the bolts that hold the ring to this thing, the thing. This is my dog's toy. I don't know why it's here. So we're gonna be pulling the pinion gear out of this one. It's a seven, uh, 27 millimeter socket up front. Uh, you can basically use a screwdriver or something and pry it into some location through the hole to prevent it from rotating. Tools necessary for the task. 27 millimeter socket with an impact gun that can basically take anything off. A uh, 17 millimeter socket for the bolts that hold the ring to wherever this is. 
a 14 millimeter socket to remove the rear cover, a pry bar to basically pry this center piece out of the housing, and that's about it for the removal procedure. For the installation, you're gonna need a torque wrench, you're gonna need um, dial indicator gauges, you're gonna need some uh, gear marking compound. So yeah, it's quite a few things, but this assembly is rather simple, inspective, and then uh, yeah, party time. So I just removed this nut I guess it's the locking. It's kind of got these weird markings on it from this pinion gear. So I'm gonna use the old nut that I really used a heavy mallet on. So you can see it's kind of like curled over on the edges. We're gonna use the same one to pound on instead of uh, pounding on the good, nice looking nut there. So let's see if we can get this started. Uh, let me make sure it's the same gear. Kind of looks like I drove it a little bit too far on the edge and the threads on the inside got a little bit messed up. So it looks like we are going to have to use this one, but I'll probably just end up putting the socket on it and I'll bang on the socket rather than on a nut. We're engaging it enough. Put the socket on it and then we're going to let her eat. Ultimately, you're supposed to use a press on this, but I don't have one available to me right now, so. So we have this piece off, and we're just going to make sure that the other one does engage onto it, and it does. Good. Now to finish pulling this piece, so probably what I'll end up having to do is order a new nut from Nissan. These get pretty messed up from the hammering. Okay, so we've pushed it out of the forward bearing. So here we are, thrust washer, uh, spacer, roller bearing. Kinda gotta make sure nothing looks damaged, everything looks happy. Clean everything off. I guess this is what you would call the thrust washer. So we are now going to take this original housing, clean it off outside. It's got a lot of dirt debris, metal from the differential that exploded in there. So we're just gonna take it outside, flush it out, and uh, see what we've got afterwards. It looks like the actual casing right next to where the bearing ride got messed up pretty bad. I'm guessing that's where the differential pretty much locked up on top of the pieces of the gearing already getting in the way. Yeah, let's go wash this, see what we got. So we have the case cleaned up. We have the new pinion that's gonna be going in. Baser goes on top, this ring, goes right there. That's supposedly the setup that I'm supposed to use for this. Actually, supposedly, I'm supposed to use this one, which is out of the S14. And as you can see, it's a bit longer. So let me just make a comparison on the pinions themselves. So same length, way bigger bearing on this one. I don't know what to do anymore. I think I might be shit out of luck right now. You can see this bearing is a lot bigger than the bearing on this one. I don't know if it's gonna work. <sighs> we have the obvious differences here. I think the diameter here is the same. I wonder if I could take this bearing and put it on this shaft. If I could do that, I might be a-okay. I think we'll have to see how it plays out. We might need a bearing puller. It basically slips on and we could just tap it down or press it down or whatever <sighs> great so my GoPro died the other day we're back here I have a little bit more insight on what's going on now so this shaft is from the 240 this shaft is from the Q45 Y33 R200 V I guess it's what it's called so I figured out what I'm gonna do now I tried changing this bearing from this shaft so this is the original bearing and this is the bearing that comes on the 240. So I took it off the 240 pinion and I put it onto the Q45 pinion. I tried fitting that into the 240 casing, but it doesn't really seem to sit as low as it did with the uh, 240 pinion in. So I'm really not sure if that's gonna work out. So after talking to a couple of different people, someone kind of suggested I should try putting the core or the guts from the 240 diff into the Q45 diff. So they visually look pretty much exactly the same. Um, 
so everything should pretty much be the same it's just this pinion will be in its home along with the forward uh, forward bearing and all that stuff is going to be pretty much what it's supposed to be except with out the LSD uh, core or VLSD core we're going to have the welded core so I'm kind of doing a visual comparison on everything and there seems to be a little bit of a misunderstanding every time I try and explain this to someone after after seeing it and trying it so this is off the Q45 so the Q45 has a bigger flange than the 240 and you'll see the visual comparison here so it's it's quite a bit bigger and what people do with these Q45 flanges is they'll basically clock their drive shaft and drill new holes for this diameter to run this uh, S14 or you know stock stock input differential like from the drive shaft end so instead of doing that if you have an S14 diff that you are pretty much just replacing internals or doing whatever you just have to pull this off so pull this one off the Q45 and put this one on the Q45 so it's pretty much that simple you can see here the Q45 S14 and it slides into place I have to kind of tap it down and that's I guess it's kind of got a close tolerance fit to it uh, same thing with this one for the 240 so it works like the splines are all engaged I can't really show you here. that works that you can swap between these two outer diameter seems to fit nicely in this seal we're going to try and focus now on getting the welded core into this r200 v housing the pinion and everything but i'm going to see the comparison between these two cores make sure the spacing between the bearing and the flate the face where the actual ring goes is the same also another thing i want to highlight so this is the 3.69 uh, ring. So this is the bolts that hold the ring to the stock 240. In other words, a 4.08 into the welded carrier. I have to basically ream those holes out or drill it and make the holes bigger so it accepts the bigger bolt. And it's only a couple millimeters. I'm swapping the bearing back on to the actual pinion. If you guys remember, uh, some of you come from my Instagram, some of you have been from my YouTube directly, but when I uh, was pulling my harmonic balancer off of my 240, the harmonic balancer was like stuck and like welded, and it was just ridiculous. I could not pull that thing off at all. I ended up having to cut it. I had a hydraulic puller, I had a ridiculous amount of tools thrown at it, and nothing was working until I cut it basically grind it down to the crank almost and split it in half so pretty crazy but usually when i buy tools i like to keep them so here we have a hydraulic puller the uh bearing splitter is what they call it and basically what i'm doing is splitting the bearing from the actual pinion shaft itself so the hydraulic ram is pushing on the end bearing splitter is underneath the bearing it's not on the roller portion itself you can see it still spins but it's under load it's pulling the whole bearing off the shaft. That way it doesn't damage anything and you can inspect or do whatever you need to do. Ultimately, you would want to change the bearings, but uh, I don't feel like it. Whatever, it's a test. We'll see how the car works. If it works, then I can know that long-term I'll run this differential in the car, but otherwise I'm just gonna keep the differential that I have in the car if it doesn't really feel right anywhere else, like uh, street drifting or just cruising on the road, which it shouldn't, it shouldn't really do anything. It should feel fine, but you know, what if. Working with what we've got, normally you should be doing this on a press, but I don't have one in the garage. I have one at my dad's shop, but I don't feel like going all the way over there. So I improvised and here I am and it's working. Working, uh, really well so yeah the bearings off so now all you need to do is take the tool off and I can just pull this bearing replace this bearing with the original one that came on it my experiment initially did not work so I'm putting this one back in place putting the pinion back in configuration how it's supposed to be spacing wise putting everything back how it came out of the R200V with the shims and everything in the same spot, the only difference is going to be that instead of this VLSD core, I'm going to be running this welded core. 
Now, I see people saying, oh, you can weld the VLSD core, but I don't really feel like doing all that when this one's quality, so. So we're about to press on the bearing back onto the pinion shaft via this press here. You're gonna have to crank it to about 500 PSI for it to bottom out, so we're just gonna do that now with the handy dandy uh, press here. So we're gonna see how far it went down. So it's making its way down. We're gonna have to put about a thousand PSI with our uh, air hammer pneumatic press here. And once you bottom out, you can pretty much tell because the jack starts to sound a little different. Yeah, so we're using the spacer off of the S14 diff because it's going to waste and it doesn't really do any damage to it when you're hitting a flat surface to another flat surface. Bearing is bottomed out on it and when we're hitting it in, we're hitting it on the inner race, which is basically the portion that is mated to the shaft itself. We're not hitting the outside, risking smashing the bearings. So you can see it still spins smoothly. So yeah, be cautious. Don't ever push the bearing from an outside, I guess, race. Just push it from the inner race and that's it. So we're fully seated there. So this is gonna be going back into the diff. So we've pressed in the pinion into the original housing with the 240 flange on it. So the next thing would be resize these holes and put the ring on this carrier and then put everything into this housing with the spacers exactly how they came off and then we'll basically be able to see what the backlash and what everything is looking like. I'm going to use the original bolt for this and kind of start the threads onto the gear. I'm gonna try and see if everything will kind of line up and sit down uh, in the housing. Cause originally when I had this in the other housing, I don't know if maybe I had the spacer on the wrong side, but basically the carrier was kind of cocked. It wouldn't fall flat into this hole. So it was kind of an angle. So that means it wasn't fully engaging onto here and it was kind of binding up. So hopefully with the spacer alignment from this VLSD onto this open differential, uh, it will space everything correctly and I'll be able to get proper seating and be able to clamp everything down. But it's just gonna be a test run to kind of see what it's looking like. So these bolts are finger tight, the ring is on. With using these bearings, you need to use the races that came individually with these bearings. They're a matched pair, so so don't use the ones off of the casing that came with this one. Use the ones that came off the 240. Use whatever spacer setup they had off of the Q45 differential instead of running what the 240 came with. So if I recall correctly, the big spacer was on the right hand side, kind of offsetting the whole assembly to the left compared to where the 240, it was on the left hand side, putting everything a little bit to the right. I think that's because of the diameter of the pinion gear. You know, the center is gonna be a little bit further from the right. So we've got everything in and together. This is a mock-up, so I only have four bolts holding the ring to the actual uh, differential. Uh, the two caps are on and everything seems to be spinning smoothly. I'm kind of eyeballing the backlash. I'll be able to get a dial indicator and see what the true backlash is, but it's looking very small. I have to see what the factory service manual calls for, but I think it, it's gonna be within range or a little bit tighter. And I have to see what the downside is to it being a little bit tighter. If it's more noise, that's fine. I'd rather it be noisier and a little bit tighter than loose and the gear smashing into each other under load and e-brake and all that stuff and have the possibility of breaking teeth off. So tighter and more noise is fine with me if that's what the downfall is of not having as much backlash. It feels really tight. So I decided that I'm going to go with the machinist buddy that I know. Plus I think this is hardened steel. I'm not 100% sure, but you might have to use like a card by a bit and all that stuff. I brought it over to him so he can look at it. And he told me if I could remove this bearing so he could put the actual uh, differential on a chuck it'll be a lot easier for him to do everything so I'm removing the bearing right now with the same uh, method that I used to remove the bearings from the pinion it kind of rides up on the ring but it is primarily touching the base of this 
so it's not putting too much strain on this while it's trying to pull the bearing out. So we're just pumping, and there it goes. This is basically uh, rust off the housing, but yeah, everything else looks pretty good. There's no pitting, there's minor corrosion on it, but nothing too dramatic. I'm trying to keep this as kind of a low budget differential swap. Hopefully the machine work doesn't cost too much. I don't think it will. So we're pretty much going to go drop this off with him. He's going to resize the holes for the new bolts. And yeah, so I'll have it back in a few days. Okay, so the differential is back. It only took uh, two days to do. Ended up having to pull the bearing off so they could chuck it and uh, do all this stuff. So as you can see now, bigger bolts. The bigger bolt now fits in all of the holes, which is what we are looking for. So now we're gonna temporarily install the ring gear. And once I get a chance to put this thing on the vise, then I'll permanently install it because I have to put a torque wrench on the bolts. I would rather do it while it's on a vise than doing it by hand and having to hold it down. But I'll see how it all works out, honestly. But I'm gonna have to Loctite everything and do all that good stuff. So we're gonna clean this ring off and then uh, put it in place. So all the bolts are installed now. I just snugged them up with a 3 8 impact. And basically now all I have to do is release one by one, put Loctite, put it back in, and do that for all of them, and then torque it all in a crisscross pattern. Then next comes putting it into the case that I have over there. Torque everything down and get a good final number for our backlash, run out, teeth engagement with the uh, teeth marking compound. So yeah, we're gonna pull each bolt, put some Loctite on the threads, we're going to put them back into place, snug them up, and then go around and torque them all. And we're using the vise right now so we can actually put the torque without everything moving around on the floor. So I just went a little bit tighter than the 240 calls for because this is one millimeter bigger than the 240 bolts. So a bigger diameter typically means higher torque compared to a small diameter, which is kind of like, this will probably be about 80 foot pounds or so. So now it's time to put the uh, spacers and washers in place of where they're going to go in the differential. Uh, I probably mentioned it before, but I'm gonna mention it again. The uh, spacers that are going to go on this differential which is the q45 housing with the 240 pieces are going to be using the same setup of spacers as what came out of the q45 center housing differential piece i had them basically lined up i marked them and everything so this is the right hand side i'm going to spray this with brake cleaner before we install it and this is the left hand side so left hand side here and then the bearing races, as I've said, they need to go matching with the bearings that you're using. Um, you can't just use whatever bearing race off of another uh, differential. You need to have the matching race with the bearing that it came with. So let's drop the core of the differential into this housing here. Also, another thing I'm doing is I'm using this uh, brake drum on the floor and I'm using the hole where the uh, axle basically goes to basically allow the center uh, pinion piece, the threaded part that's sticking past the flange to hold, go through the hole and allow me to stand it up without having to do anything weird. Because working up here would be a little tall. It's just a little easier on the floor. So since I put it together, I had a chance to measure it at work, but when I measured it, I measured it from the wrong place that it's calling for in the factory service manual. So I asked my buddy Tyler to lend me his dial indicator gauge and we've got it set up right now. So basically, 
Uh, I had measured it from this face initially, and you're supposed to measure it from this chamfered face, this 45 degree angle. So as you can see, it's on there right now, and you just have to spin the diff and watch the deflection on the needle here. It's either going to move a lot or a little bit. So we have about a two to three thousandths deviation from what's called run out. Run out is basically how off center something is. So if it rotates and you have um, five thousandths of run out, that means it's got like a lobe, almost like imagine like a cam or something. So if you measure a lot of run out, you have basically a differential that isn't centered within its rotating point. So in other words, if the center is supposed to be here, it means it's like slightly off to the side. So when it rotates, it gets a low spot on one side and high spot on the other, or it just means it's got like a defect in the material where it's got too much material on one side and it kind of adds a lot of uh, weight offset. But that's not really the case, I don't think, with these differentials. They're usually made, you know, OEM. It's not like they can get messed up unless you do something really catastrophic. So as long as it rotates and the dial indicator doesn't really move, you're okay. So this is in thousandths. So from zero to 10, it'll read in 0 0.010 of an inch. So if I have one line of this, it's 0 0.001 until I reach 10, that's 0 .10, 0 0.010. Like once I get to 90, it's 0 0.090 and it just keeps going from there. So next thing we're gonna measure is the backlash and the backlash is measured by rotating the ring gear and seeing the space in between the ring gear and the pinion. And it's basically going to have a little bit of play before it touches the, the pinion gear again. So you push it all the way to one side, set the tool up, and then push it all the way to the other. And before the actual pinion moves itself uh, and it stops, that's your backlash. So with the Nissans, you want a, I think, four thousandths to six thousandths backlash and that's like kind of minimal but i believe it's for oil um you always want oil to be covering all your metal surfaces oil acts like a cushion it acts like a lubricant obviously um but the biggest thing i believe is the cushion that it'll create between two metal surfaces that you don't want to actually have metal to metal contact you just have that slight oil film and that's what this does but if you have it too loose that oil film will take a, like a millisecond to compress, but it'll it'll create more of a shock input is my logic on it. It might not be right. I believe a little bit of a tighter differential will be better in this case because I do do a lot of clutch kicks. I do all that stuff. So we're just gonna measure the backlash and see if it's in the, in the lower range. If it's too wide, then we gotta change shims and do all this weird stuff. So let's see. I'm pretty sure I have this in the right spot. If it's not, it's close enough. It might need to be in the middle or something, but this gives us a general idea of what we're looking at. So we have the uh, axle stub shafts in my hand and we're going to be slightly pushing it back and forth until it stops and it makes a very abrupt stop. So that means it's hitting the actual pinion. So you can see here, the backlash is about five thousandths. We're okay, we're, we're within limits. That'll give us a proper oil film. Next thing to do is look inside. We're going to uh, paint these surfaces with some yellow paint. We're gonna be rotating the assembly and allowing the pinion to show what contact it's making to the ring gear itself. So I just did a full rotation and it's kind of hard to see. It looks like the full face of it practically got taken off the paint transfer there. So I think this is okay. Normally they call for a little bit out the middle and they usually say to avoid being on the edges or on too far on the inside or too far on the outside but this looks like it's pretty much grabbing the whole face, so I think this might be okay. So this is pretty much gonna be the end of this video. I ended up just finishing up the differential by putting the cover and filling it up with oil, uh, and then I ended up putting it in the car. So the next video is gonna be basically me going to a private event with Shulman and Adam, and we're gonna be testing the car, putting it through its paces, making sure the differential doesn't fall apart. So thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, comment, do all that fancy fun stuff. I'm trying to grow this channel to be something where I can actually make something happen with it. So let's do it.